Here's a quick video on banks and their launch, or more accurately, how I didn't make any gains at all from using Meteor on launch. And I'm going to show you why, and then I'll discuss what I did wrong so that you can learn from it. So banks, as you should know, they did their token launch yesterday. It did not go smoothly, and I will kind of save judgment and I'll stay fairly neutral. Long story short, they had 500 million tokens available for claiming and not many people were able to claim the site went down there are many many issues and now they've gone with their tactic is basically to embrace the fud and try and i'm not really sure what uh, i don't think it's necessarily the best tactic but it's them and it's their team and they can do whatever they like but they're working on fud as the ultimate fuel and maybe in some ways getting lots of fud will get more eyes on the project and more people will kind of convert anyway so i did this very short video yesterday it was just on Twitter, didn't get really anyone actually seeing it, which was completely fine, and I did it quite late. But essentially what I did is I locked in some USDC before the token actually started trading. You can see there's $78,000 or so of USDC, and I locked in some USDC at different ranges and different points. So I did the first one, and the token had, hadn't actually started to trade, so, you know, at that stage, there's no trading volume. But if the token price went into that range, then it would start to actually trade and then maybe it would be profitable. So this is Meteor here and these are my positions. Now you can actually see just I'm not managing these positions very well. I keep on falling out of range. So as an example, Jupe and Jito Sol, I have some fees to claim and I've fallen out of this range maybe quite some time ago. I'm not entirely sure. Same with Sol and USDC and WIF and Banks. So when you are actually in a pool, you need to make sure that you're in the trading range. So as an example, banks and USDC. Here is this position. The current pool price is this amount and I'm way off that. So I'm not gonna be trading until things actually start to increase. And we can see because the price went down significantly, all I'm left with is a decent amount of banks and no USDC here, but I do have some unclaimed swap fees here. Now, just so you know, using Meteora gets you points. There's no actual points hub, but you are actually getting points by using Meteora. So that's one of the saving graces because you can see I don't have a lot of money in here and I initially put in $300. So 300 USDC managed to turn into 200. I do have some money to claim here, so maybe it's a little bit more, but you can see it's not doing very, very well. So what I have to do now is I actually have to withdraw this position and then redeploy it. You can see active bin outside of price range, and I have to wait for the price to either come up to my bin step, which is completely fine, I can wait for that, or I have to withdraw and I can close the position. So I'm gonna withdraw and close the position here, confirm and phantom, and I'll do the same here and it'll claim these fees as well, that's fine. 100% withdraw and close position, and then we can go and redeploy. I'll also click on claim all fees because there will be some fees that I can claim because this is in the other pool and the other pool is doing quite well. Try it again. It says my fees earned has been $146. Don't know if that's accurate. Maybe it is. If we just pop into the wallet here, I imagine Meteora would be accurate with the fees. However, even though I've earned decent fees, of course, the price tanked and it has not gone well. Now, by the way, ignore this first part here where it says minus $1,600. This is pretty common when a brand new token launches. This is how it looks. The chart will often say down 90% if there's a bit of hype because the first person to buy will be buying it normally at a really high price, maybe a bot messes up, something like that, and then it'll come down. So if we exclude this first kind of range and we can't really do too well here, but if we kind of come something like this, we can see realistically we're down around 35%. Of course, some people would have bought higher and they would have lost a little bit. But in reality, we're not down 90%, we're down about 35. Now, as I mentioned, I can't really talk to banks' strategy. They did something, it didn't work, but it's getting more eyes on the project. At the moment, there's only about 5,000 holders of banks token. They have a good product and maybe with a few pivots, things start to improve for them. I'm just really not sure. And because it's in the NFT space and I'm more concerned with DeFi, I probably don't have the best recommendations there. So I'm gonna go add another position. I can go with spot, curve, or this one here, bid ask, but I'm gonna go with maybe curve. I'm gonna go with a curve strategy in the current price here, and I'll go add half of this and half of this, add the liquidity. Remember, there's a little bit of a soul charge there for each position, but when you close a position, you get the soul back get the soul back in its entirety. So that range has been created. Now I'm gonna jump back into this. I'm gonna go and add another strategy. This time, 
turn off autofill and I'm just going to go with spot and all the banks add liquidity and confirm because this is going to the same position I don't have to spend any more soul if I want to I could go and add this as well turn off autofill however I can't actually change the range so this is where I may decide to add a different position go and change the range so I can't autofill I can only just add all of this if I want to maybe I go with spot and maybe I set it at a much lower price just in case it does nip all the way down there. Confirm. And now we've got our positions here. So we can see total liquidity at $300. Fees earned quite a decent amount for sure. I'm not entirely sure if this is accurate though. It just seems a little bit too wild. And unfortunately I am down with this position. But now I've redeployed my capital. I'm earning points. And we can see how this current position will do. Now one of the team members has just DM'd me while I've been doing this video. And if you did actually vote for banks in the first LFG vote, you will be getting a reward. I'm not sure how much banks, but you will be getting some sort of banks. If you actually use the catnip protocol, you will not be getting any extra banks. There were clearly some issues there. Also, in my opinion, it probably would have been a better system if you were able to claim your banks similar to how you can claim your juke. Maybe there's a cutoff time. Maybe it's vested. Maybe it's vested like basket. So even if you did have an allocation of 64 million banks that you could claim, you could only claim a little bit every day. You can still set the 500 million total pool, but people have to jump in there, claim something, and maybe the claim process takes around seven days before all the funds are actually exhausted. There is a little bit more work in that. That would have been a better strategy because to be honest, over many, many years, first come, first served, this has never, ever worked. It's never been a good system and it wasn't a good system now. But they decided to launch with that and that's what it is. The final thing that I'll mention is Camino Finance. They do not have a lot of DLMM pools, but that is okay. Hopefully they can add some more. So what we can essentially see here under say liquidity, you've got all of these dupe vaults. We'll just let the site load as clearly they're getting a decent amount of traction. And if you see the Meteora logo, then you know that you'll be getting met points, Camino points, and also trading fees. So if it was possible to add USDC and banks into Camino Finance, I would have done this because that way I don't have to change my strategy. But at present, the only things that are in here are just dupe paired with another asset. So banks and USDC, they are not in this pool. Actually, there's one more thing to cover. Banks and USDC. What would have happened is I would have had decent swap fees. And then in the position, I would have accumulated quite a few banks. It would have been sold for USDC and then I would have had to come back in and then redeploy it. Or even better, if the price had have gone a little bit up, a little bit down, a little bit up, a little bit down, that would have done very well as well. But unfortunately with banks, the price kind of went up and then it just came on down. And as it came down, I did not change my strategies or my positions. So next month, I will cover the strategy for say Zeus Network. And it is similar to this strategy, but you just have to be more hands-on, checking the pool say every hour. That's all for this video. Catch you in the next one.